Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two, 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 two. All right, guys, so hope you guys have been well. Today, what we're going to focus on is a graduation. And I know we've been doing graduation a lot, but here's the deal. I wanted to bring in and do a kind of a V shape in the back to shift the weight a little bit differently. So the over direction is going to be different. Uh, the way we go about the haircut is going to be a little bit different. So I think you guys are going to like that part of it. And also, this may be my new signature haircut because of the M shape that I've now seen come through. So guys, no wasting time. Let's get started with our step by step. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start off by sectioning a triangle section in the top of the head. So starting at the recession point and drawing a V shape to a point in the center crown in the back. Then we draw a diagonal forward line down to behind the ear and then a diagonal back line um, to the occipital bone. Now we're gonna start our cut uh, working diagonal back. So we're gonna start by we're really creating that line, creating that heavier weight to the very center back of the head, uh, which is going to create that V shape. So we start off by cutting everything flat down on the skin. That's going to create the strongest line possible. And then we start elevating from that point on. So we're continuing consistently uh, drawing those diagonal back partings, but then elevating slightly as we work up the head to create a nice graduation in the haircut. So you see I'm staying consistent, staying diagonal back, following parallel with my fingers to the parting and just working my way up the head. What this is gonna do is grow that extra length down towards the bottom of my finger, which will create that V shape in the end. So it's really, finger angle plays a huge role in how you want that shape to appear in the back of the head. So when you see different haircuts that have movement and different shapes in the back, it has a lot to do with finger angle. And then your elevation has everything to do with how high that shape's gonna build up and how high that graduation is going to go up. So again, starting really strong lines in the back, flat against the skin, that draws a really strong guideline. And then bringing the rest of the hair down to that point uh, to cut the hair at the guide. So we're working palm to palm. It's the most comfortable way to cut the back of the head here. And just keeping that elevation nice and low, building up weight throughout the back of the head shape. So you can see how much over direction happens towards the center back of the head. That over direction really pushes that extra weight into the center, which you can see happening right now. Now we comb down our next panel. Our guide is gonna come from the back. Our partings are exactly the same. So working diagonal back, uh, over direction is still the same. The only thing that's changing now is our elevation is gonna be higher than it was on the bottom section because the curve of the head is starting to move away from us, which I talk about in every single cut that we do. So you really gotta pay attention to how the head shape is shifting. So as we're working up the head shape, my elevation gets higher so that the hair stays nice and light throughout the shape. If I were to keep the elevation at the same point that I did at the bottom section, it would be really, really heavy by the time I got to the top of this section. So it's going through there, over direction is the same, pushing that weight to the center, creating the shape. Same thing on the right side, so just working diagonal back. Um, one thing that I'm definitely working with is my 339 comb. This is YS Park comb. Um, and I'm going through, I'm using the tighter teeth to get nice tight tension on the haircut. Now I'm not squeezing it too tight. Like I'm not trying to shift the hair way far from where it lives, but I am uh, working with the fine teeth to keep the hair um, exactly where I want it as I'm combing through the sections. So still working that over direction, uh, still working that finger angle um, to create that heaviness in the back and taking it a small section at a time. Now the goal with this is you'll see me uh, take my diagonal back parting and then as I comb, I'm only taking a little bit of the old hair, just enough to see that guide through and I'm not taking too much new hair so I can't see my guide. So that is how we cut the back section. Now I'm gonna go through and blow it dry. This is something that I'm uh, definitely doing in most haircuts at this point because I like watching the shape kind of unfold throughout the haircut. And I wanna see that that back is exactly the way that I'm uh, trying to cut it before I move on to the rest of the haircut. There's no point in cutting um, the entire cut wet and then finding out that you don't really love the back shape of the haircut. So going through um, using the Vibra Straight Iron, this is the 413 brush from Paul Mitchell and uh, just to give me a little bit more air in the haircut. 
and just going through beveling the edge of the hair. It's a very key thing when you're ironing hair for cutting is to just make sure that you're following the head shape with the iron to create that nice beveled feel to fit the head shape because that's the whole point of ironing it out and smoothing out the hair is to make sure that um, you can see all the lines that you've created and, and how the weight is shifting in the haircut. Now I'm gonna go through with some dry detailing. This I'm using my DB20 scissor from Mizutani. Um, I like this scissor because it has a really sharp blade and the blade is skinny. So um, it has a lot of power, but I can get nice and close to each section that I'm working with. So I'm detailing that outer perimeter. I really wanted to see the outer perimeter coming to life right away, um, kind of an instant gratification thing. So I could have waited till the end, but I just like seeing that shape unfold. So now we're gonna over direct everything from the side panel back to a stationary guide. Um, you're gonna notice that my the way that I'm holding the scissor is a little bit different. This is, um, again, uh, we've talked about this in the past. I want to keep my wrist as comfortable as possible. So just going through there, shifting my finger in the other direction of the, the, the hole in the scissor um, allows me to keep my wrist comfortable. If you use swivel scissors, then you can kind of automatically do this. Um, but when you use standard scissors, it's good to just shift your finger. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's definitely worth um, the practice because it'll save your wrist in the end. So everything came back to that stationary guide. What that's going to do is push the weight forward, um, kind of hugging the jawline. Um, so that's the angle that we're creating there. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So working diagonal forward sections, um, going through and cutting. One thing that I want to uh, point out is you can see the diagram and you guys have been asking for a downloaded version of the diagrams to use later on or to print out yourself. So I will have a, a link in the description. Um, you'll see a Dropbox link. You can click that link, download the head sheet and uh, keep it with you to study if you wanna just take that haircut with you that way. So going through, same thing, over directing back, stationary guide, and just, this is gonna build up a little extra weight because you can see that my elevation is not high, but I don't mind the extra weight and we can always go through with some dry cutting and lighten up the sides. But the density changes on the side of the head is a lot lighter than in the back because there's just more hair in the back of the head. So I don't mind that a little less elevation in the sides um, to, to go through the haircut because I can always, again, take it out um, during the dry, dry cut portion. So now I'm going to part the hair exactly where she's going to wear it. Um, so this would definitely change with within each guest that you're doing. Um, and then based on that part, I'm going to work across the crown of the head, connecting the bottom point. And a lot of people ask where I get my guide from. My guide is always coming from the previous section. So that's the previously cut hair that I had before. So I'm just blending in the top to the bottom. A lot of times in hair cutting, um, the top is where you can see the heaviest points or where the layers are falling because you're cutting literally on the top of the head. So the angles are a lot different. So as I'm going through, a lot of times I like to just blend the top to keep it nice and soft. So now as I work towards the front, my finger angle is going to shift a little bit. It's going to be more um, with the angle of the where the parietal ridge sits on the head. You can see it in a lot of the diagrams. So it's a little more angled, um, not straight up in the air. It's a little off to the right. So as I'm going through, I'm building up a little extra weight towards the part, um, which is going to be nice for the end result of the haircut um, to give a little bit of extra weight up there. So slight over direction back, you can see that weight pushed forward. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing in the back portion or on the left-hand side. The only difference on the left-hand side is that we're gonna over direct everything all the way back. Um, again, less density on the left side, it's our part side. So because we're on the part side, I can over direct everything straight back and build up a little extra weight on, on the left. So we'll go through blow it dry, flat wrap style. We've already blown dry the back and ironed it. So we're already working quicker. We're already ahead of time. And um, I can go through flat wrap, a little bit of lift, a little bit of leafing, and then my 339 comb and my Vibrastrate iron just to iron it out. And that's pretty much it. So we're working the head shape. We're going to get into the dry cutting, which is really where this shape um, comes to life. So after I go through with the 339 comb, I go through with the 413 brush. This just allows me, again, a little bit of air to the haircut. 
Now you can see the shape that we did. And I, I always talk about the fact that just because you elevate the hair and over direct it doesn't mean that the outer perimeter looks great. So we over direct it, push the weight where we want it. And then I go in and create the outer perimeter that I'm looking for. So you start the angle with the over direction, but then you go in and detail it um, dry. So I went through, created that V shape. Now I'm going to go through point cut a lot, adding some air and light uh, feel to um, the sides of the hair. This is where I talked about we did over direct it. It's a little bit heavier. Now I'm taking that weight out. Still using the DB20 scissor. This is a 5.7 inch scissor uh, that we have on freesaloneducation.com. I love this scissor for pretty much everything. So um, it's got a nano powder metal, which um, is a softer metal. It grips the hair really well. Um, it's a very luxury feeling scissor. It also has a naked ball bearing uh, screw. So it actually has ball bearings in the screw, which allows for a smoother open and close to the scissor. So it's a pretty cool tool. So you can see how smooth the back is looking, um, just going around the whole perimeter of the head and adding light uh, pieces to the layers using point cutting. Not changing the line, you can see the line stays strong, just going through and adding some light feel to it with the point cutting technique. Keeping the scissor very uh, vertical to the hair so that I don't create extra lines in there. Now I wanted to add a little bit of a fringe, but I wanted it to be really broken and really long. So I just take out a little triangle section in the very front and go in with deep point cutting just to soften right around the face. A little scissor over comb detail. This is just lifting it up. I wanted to soften the edge of that graduation right there. Um, so this is a technique that I use to do that. And just finishing up detailing those lines. This is something that when you want to create really strong lines in a haircut, you're going to work those lines for quite a while, but it's totally worth it because this is something that no matter what, your guests will walk around and have these lines put in if you put in the work. If you just try to cut it once and let it sit there, then they're not going to be able to recreate it. Those lines aren't going to be strong enough. So just going in, going over the lines over and over will uh, make your haircuts a lot better. All right, so we're going to finish up the haircut with our Bricado Firm Hold Hairspray, um, just holding that shape in place. Now I'm going to go through with the DB20 scissor and just finish out detailing the lines. I'm using the point of the scissor. The thing I love about the DB20 scissor is how sharp the point is. So as I'm going through, hitting it with a little bit of point cutting around the edges, um, I can really detail those lines really well. So finishing it up, uh, this is the end result. Hope you guys like it. Let me know. All right, like always, if you like this video, you like this haircut, hit the like button, hit the share button, comment below, let me know what you think and what you wanna see next on upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and the support. Check out freesaloneducation.com and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video, thanks.